U-Boat. It's a game made by the same people who brought you such fine immersive gaming experiences like Bum Simulator and Farmer's Life. But do not be fooled, because among some of their other decent material, U-Boat stands proud as one of their most ambitious games yet. If you enjoy games like Silent Hunter 3, but are having trouble with getting the game to run, then U-Boat could be a good alternative with some new and welcome mechanics. Especially if, like me, you cringe at the thought of having to download mods from the subsim websites to run the game at modern resolutions. U-Boat is an extremely customizable experience, and that's before we even get into the workshop support. First things first though, we have to pick a sub. There are eight to choose from. The further down you go, the later in the war the game starts. For the uninitiated, things got pretty hard for the Kriegsmarine near 1945. The game then gives you some useful prompts to help customize your experience, after which you can double check them individually and change them to your liking. I usually prefer playing with food management turned off, because I want an experience more like Silent Hunter, and less like The Sims. <laughs> then finally, you get to create your... There are a number of different aesthetics you can go for, depending on your own refined tastes. Want your U-boat to be commandeered by a British chimney sweep? Voila! Or do you prefer more of a night out with the fellas type of look? Well, look no further. I, myself, am more of a traditionalist. <laughs> Meet Baba Braun. Okay, I'm a Nazi. Perfect. The game then shits you out onto the dock. Welcome to the hub area. If this is your first time playing, then you'll want to find your leading officer. The first thing he tells you is that headquarters are deeply impressed by your last patrol. Hints at a future stolen valor mechanic, perhaps. You can then ask him for some training missions. These are very well done. I can quickly show you how to get up and running aboard your civilian ship blaster. I still recommend doing some of these training missions even if you're an experienced sub-simmer, as the game teaches you a lot about how to prepare for missions at the dock, as well as how to control your crew to do different tasks around the submarine. So how does that work exactly? Controlling the crew is one of the biggest selling points of U-Boat. You can no longer just materialize at the attack periscope whenever you feel like it like in other games. You have to send your skipper to operate it first, and then watch him slowly stumble his way towards it. This travel time between different sections of the ship rewards pre-planning your attacks. You don't want to get caught lacking with your leading officer passed out in bed when you finally caught up to that convoy you've been chasing for the last four days. Your crew now has an energy meter as well as morale that slowly depletes the longer they've gone without a trip to the Alps. Let the morale get too low and one of your men might just have a psychotic break, letting any hydrophone operators within a 20 mile radius know exactly where you are. If you've picked the earliest campaign start, then you will have five officers on board, each with their own specialty. Your engineers will excel at maintenance around your boat. They can keep an eye on your engines to make them run more efficiently, as well as helping them squeeze out a little more juice when it's time to chase down that unsuspecting fishing boat. <laughs> The only purpose of the communications expert is manning the hydrophone, as well as creating another financial crisis in Germany due to the sheer amount of money he'll be printing at the radio station. And the final two officers are best utilized when operating in tactical stations, such as the navigating table or the conning tower. On top of this, your ship also has sailors. <laughs> Up to two sailors can be assigned to each officer to help them with any given task. This brings an entirely new aspect to the existing subsim genre, and is gonna make you have to pay attention to things that you may have never even considered before, like making sure you're topped up on compressed air to keep your ballast tanks functional, as well as manually having to rig the ship for silent running when you get into a bit of a pickle. I recommend picking minimal crew management for your first couple campaigns and watching the AI to figure out where to place them. Having said this though, the vanilla game is lacking in some other features that may turn some people off. Base game does actually have a TDC, but it's nowhere near as immersively sexy as the ones you may have been used to in other games. Depending on your difficulty, you can also leave the torpedo course plotting up to the officer manning the periscope. This makes sense with the type of game I think they're trying to create here, but have no fear. Remember that workshop support I mentioned earlier? You want a TDC? You got one! And it fits into the game like the devs made it themselves. There are a ton of different mods made with the purpose of having a more realistic experience in U-Boat. So if you fear that the mechanics are watered down, rest assured, 
Someone made a mod for that. But even with how clearly polished the game is in a lot of ways, like how the graphics just look absolutely gorgeous at times, you can seriously see the farmer life scuff bleeding into the character models and their animations. There is also a lot of room for improvement in the quality of life department. My biggest pet peeve with the game at the moment is that zooming into the interior of the submarine zooms you into the last compartment you were previously at. I think it would be far more intuitive if the game zoomed you into whatever part of the ship your mouse is pointing to towards instead. It can be very frustrating to suddenly decide that I need to load my bow torpedoes only to be zoomed into the engine room all the way in the back. The game is still in early access though and I sincerely hope they fix some of this jank. But enough of this chit chat. I think the easiest way of showing off what the game is about is just by going through some missions. If you don't own this game, or you're a sub sim newbie, but you like the look of the game so far, then treat this next part of the video as a tutorial of sorts. An appetizer, if you will, for what the game has to offer. So, welcome aboard the ship of Baba Braun, the finest German U-boat on this side of the... Europe. The first mission I picked is the most common type, and it's one that most people who have played similar games will be familiar with. I had to sail to this grid southwest of Portugal. You're always given two objectives that are needed to successfully complete the patrol. In this case, I had to travel 2,500 kilometers within this green grid. On top of this, I have to sink 10,000 tons of merchant shipping. This might seem like an ungodly amount, but it only equates to around three or four vessels. A nice, easy start. After topping up on torpedoes and fuel, I set engines to standard and sailed off. It only took around two days to get to our patrol area. 2500 kilometers isn't a walk in the park though. This entire mission would take around a week at best. I figured that the best place to find some British ships would be as near to the port of Gibraltar as I could possibly get whilst remaining within my patrol grid. I got in the rough area and started doing frequent hydrophone checks. Hydrophonies <laughs> are pretty much useless when cruising on the surface, so constant diving is required if you want even the slightest hope of ever finding anything. Prepare to do this all the time. If you're actively hunting for enemies and your batteries are fully charged, there's pretty much no reason not to be underwater listening out for those thick oil tankers in the distance. Out here, a man's worth is determined through girth. In my case though, my theory worked, and I quickly caught a lone ship leaving Gibraltar. I knew instantly, just by the look of the crew, this was a British ship. I lined myself up perfectly. It was orgasmic how perfect this approach was. At a distance of only 1.2 kilometers, it was finally time. Bubba has a trigger finger, and oh boy, was it having an itch. I opened the torpedo launcher and... Fuck. I didn't preheat any of them. Now, there are two possible actions here. I could start preheating them now, and then re-intercept the ship again, once they are ready. <laughs> Preheating torpedoes decreases the chances of having a dud, so it's worth doing right before combat. However, I ain't got time for that shit. Launch them anyway, boys. Close! And just like that, Bubba's first taste of blood. Survivors! You can take up to eight survivors aboard your U-boat and trade them in for some cool renown back at the dock. However, this space is best saved for officers, as their lives are worth more than those of simple sailors. There's only really one downside to taking prisoners. They breathe. I mean, I guess they also eat, but don't at me. With a U-boat full of prisoners, you'll start to find that you run out of oxygen much before you even get close to draining your batteries when submerged. It is still worth doing though, as a full eight captured officers will net you a cool 1500 renown. If you find yourself in a stealthy situation, but you're running out of oxygen, you can quickly replenish it by poking your conning tower out of the water for a couple of minutes. Sure, you're still not as safe as when you're fully underwater, but that's the sort of compromise you'll need 
need to make if you're out here trying to make that paper. I surfaced near the lifeboat and could immediately smell the metric ton of shit secreting from the buttocks of the survivors. We're in luck. Two of them were officers, a captain and an engineer. Valuable stock indeed. I took them aboard my vessel and quickly fed the defeated captain some soup. As for the rest, better luck next time. They were only about 150 kilometers away from the coast, so Bubba decided to get some sleep. A very well earned one at that. It took three whole days before I managed to find another ship. Another lone merchant leaving from Gibraltar. You would think that the British might have been wondering what happened to the last lonely ship that sailed out and never returned. But I think at this point, they had some bigger things to worry about. I'll be honest. I was starting to get a little bit of a deja vu. The similar approach, the same mistake with the torpedoes, the flawless execution. What did surprise me though, is the amount of survivors this time around. Six whole ass lifeboats from this one merchant ship. I collected two more officers, but now I was left with a question. What about everyone else? What if I just fucking... And here's where I found out that you can't commit war crimes in U-boat. Yet. Embarrassed, I quickly made my way out of there, leaving the rest of the sailors to fend for themselves. That absolute chunker of a ship to help me reach my 10,000 ton quota for this patrol though, and I only had a few hundred kilometers left before the mission would be considered a success. I circled around the same hotspot until my distance objective was complete. Unfortunately, I did not manage to come across any new merchants in the meantime. Worry not though, I still have a lot of diesel left, as well as four torpedoes in the bow. Bubba has dreamed of becoming an ace. You might as well use up all of the torpedoes you have on any patrol, as they very quickly pay for themselves. T1 torpedoes are a mere 300 renown at this difficulty level, whereas the electrically powered T2s are usually given away for free. You'd be mad not to use all of them. I set sail for a well-known hotspot in the Celtic Sea region, a prime place for merchants going to and from America. What's that? A radio transmission from command? There's a sizable convoy close to my position. Looks like we'll be heading home sooner than expected. This will be the true test. These aren't the lone merchant ships of yesterday. These have strength in numbers and are also escorted by anti-submarine destroyers equipped with hydrophones of their own. We'll have to use a classic technique to make sure we remain undetected. The shoot then gracefully exit strategy. Because setting up a proper torpedo solution can take many minutes, it's usually best to send a couple of torpedoes out towards one ship, then re-engage the same convoy again later. This, however, is a special convoy. A ship by the name of Empire Rosalind is believed to be carrying crucial technology that would help the Allied war effort if undisturbed. We must sink it at all cost. I got within a safe spotting distance of the convoy and waited as Skipper Braun identified the vessels on the surface. Alas, it did not take long before we identified the target. The Rosalind wasn't a big ship, but nonetheless, it had to go down. I set off three torpedoes just to be safe. I then set the dive depth to around 120 meters and called an emergency meeting to let everyone know, SHUT THE FUCK UP! All three torpedoes hit the target. The Rosalind is no more. I got anxious for a minute as one of the destroyers nearly passed overhead, expecting depth charges to be dropped at any minute. Thankfully though, we managed to remain undetected. But with two torpedoes left, it was time for another run. I caught up with the convoy again that very same day. I wasn't going to be picky. The first merchant ship I saw was going to get a torpedo launched its way. Nos! To my surprise, it went down from just the one. I then turned around and launched another torpedo from the aft tube at a different ship. And that's all she wrote. I waited submerged in place for a few hours before resurfacing the boat and collecting a couple more stranded officers. After which, it was finally time to return home.
I ended up with a total sunk tonnage of over 27,000, much more than the demanded 10,000, though there is definitely room for improvement. Nonetheless, a very successful maiden voyage for Bubba Braun, for whom two iron crosses were rightfully earned. As you can see, this was just one mission. The game does a good job of dynamically changing your playthroughs and giving you extra random objectives to spice up those simple patrols. On top of this, there are also numerous different special missions, so if you get bored of patrolling around, you can do something a little bit different. If you've never played a submarine simulator before, then hopefully this video has convinced you to give U-Boat a go. If you are still undecided, then I would highly recommend watching some videos by Wolfpack345. If those videos don't make you want to get the game, then nothing will. Games in this genre are few and far between in the modern gaming landscape, and I commend Deepwater Studio for the scope of this project. I'll be looking forward to seeing how this game develops over time. I want you to subscribe to me. Scav Merchant Hub. On YouTube, thank you, cringe. Bye.